Hello, I'm Tim Durham with Durham's Bee Farm. And uh, how many hives should I start with? We always tell people to start with two hives, and I still think that's a good number for, for more than one reason. You'll be able to compare them. Sometimes you can use one hive to help boost up, up the other hive. How far apart should the hives be from each other? If you're installing two or more hives at the same time, I would have them far enough apart where they don't get confused. If you if you put packages in ten hives and they're all close together, when you the next day when you go out there, all those packages from those ten hives will be in one hive. So if you put two or more hives establish uh originally have them, uh, who knows, 15 feet apart. And then, after that, each day, you can move them toward each other. Uh, you can move them uh, two or three feet a day toward each other. And they can, they can end up having just a, a few inches between them. And that, that'll work just fine. Which direction... Should I have my hives facing? Uh, everybody says south. Uh, the uh, chances are the the front of the entrance will get more sun, and it will warm up the front of the hive better. And they can take in the winter time. They can take cleansing flights. Um, uh, how close to the house can I put my hives? Uh, <clears throat> Now that's that's kind of a hard question to answer. Uh, you you uh, initially you don't want to be uh, unless you're an experienced beekeeper. You don't want to be walking in front of your bees. You don't want your children or your wife for sure. And uh, but other than that, uh, if you if you placed them on one end of the house and you're not walking in front of them or your dog is now. A dog will learn real quick the difference between the rear and the front of a hive. They will learn real quick. Uh, cats, they I've seen cats sleep beside a hive. They don't seem to bother cats. Uh, uh, what should I uh, What should I plant to help my bees? Uh, nothing. Uh, now, if, if you want to plant something to make you feel good. Then uh, uh, turnip greens, uh, you don't pick them in next spring, man, they'll, they'll put on a lot of blooms. Uh, but uh, uh, you, you really can't plant anything to really help them. Mother Nature is the best helper. Uh, uh, should, I buy, should I buy medication for my bees? When you first start out, don't worry about that. You got plenty of time to worry about that later. Uh, it's just like when when uh, uh, a teacher takes a student out to teach him how to drive. They tell that student, uh, basically, don't worry about the other cars. Right now, you just concentrate on what you're doing. So, uh, right at first, don't worry about medication. How much honey will I get my first year? Uh, Probably uh, from zero to very little. Don't plan on it. I have had people tell us that that uh, uh, when you start from foundation, uh, you're going to make a lot less honey just because of that. So uh, uh, the, the, let's say let's say that you start two hives, and the first year you make no honey. The next year we'll say you make one super of honey. Then the next year, you may make two or three supers of honey. All right. Now, I, I made some notes, so hopefully I wouldn't forget some things. Uh, if the, at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you about our young preacher. and uh, uh, But we, we'll get to that here in a minute. Uh, uh, 
I've had some questions about hiving a swarm. Uh, uh, the things you should do, uh, when you hive a swarm, the, the care you should give them uh, is pretty much the same as a package of bees. We install a package of bees. But let's say that you put a, you put a swarm in your hive and uh, uh, very seldom, very seldom, but once in a while, they'll leave, go back up on the limb. If that happens, get a frame of eggs and brood and put in this box before you attempt to put them back in the hive. Uh, so you put a frame of eggs or larvae in this hive and, uh, uh, and then you shake the bees back in there. Uh, you can get some screen, once the majority of them have gone in there, then get some screen or some cloth and stop up the entrance till the next day. Uh, they'll settle down and most likely they'll, they'll, they'll stay there then. Uh, when you have a swarm, I, I encourage all that. That is so much fun. That, that is a fun thing. It's, it's not really work. But it's fun. Uh, uh, let's say you go out and get a get a swarm, and uh, you have it in a a box or whatever. Uh, lay you a sheet, if you an old sheet down on the ground, so the bees can crawl on the sheet, a piece of some plywood, anything flat that they can crawl on. Uh, uh, you'll be able to uh, uh, observe them better if they're on a flat surface like that, as opposed to in the, the grass that may be one or two inches high. Now, when you dump this swarm in front of the hive, uh, if, if you've got a queen catcher, have it ready. Uh, it's, it's not unusual for there to be more than one queen in a swarm. And uh, particularly if you need another queen, uh, if you don't have a queen catcher, then uh, uh, you can, one of the queens you can catch with your fingers and put, you can put her in any kind of container and put a screen on it with two or three bees. We'll say that you dump the bees in front of the hive and you're down there observing them, and you see a ball of bees. And when I say a ball, the size of a quarter or more. And they, and the bees on the outside of that ball, they look like they're they're frantic. They're just just frantic. Uh, they there's a queen in the center of that ball, and they're trying to kill her because there's another queen in the hive. Uh, you get you a, you use your fingers, it don't matter, uh, a stick and, and or two little sticks or your fingers and, and force those bees off of her and then you can, then you can pick her up. They're not, they're not trying to get you, they're trying to get that queen. So, uh, anyhow, uh, be on, be on the lookout for that. Uh, feeding, uh, I would, I would definitely feed a swarm. Uh, let's say you're putting on foundation, and they don't have uh, any any food in there. I would feed them. It would help them. Uh, it will help them uh, 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 get started faster and build the comb. Uh, now, I've got almost 200 videos. Uh, each one of you should be able to go back and look at my previous videos and and hopefully my title tells you what's going to be in there, like uh, putting frames together. And I have some showing you having a swarm. So you should be able to, to find all my videos and, and look at them. And when you do, hit that thumbs up if you liked it and then subscribe to it if you will. Uh, 
now, my, my previous video, I, I uh, devoted most of the video to, uh, I call it a plywood feeding, where you, you use a three-quarter inch plywood on top of the hive, and you, you cut a round hole in it so a fruit jar will sit in it. Uh, one, one viewer said someone told him that uh, that's no good because in the winter time it will kill them. Well, uh, with all due respect, that was probably somebody that's wanting to sell their expensive uh, top feeders or inside feeders. Uh, uh, there's not a lot of things that are are fact, dead factual, and and uh, in beekeeping. Many times there could be other choices, but but in my opinion, this plywood feeder is definitely the only way to go. It's the best way to go, and it's the least costly. Now, uh, <clears throat> commercial beekeepers don't cover that jar up with, with a high body. I always did. Now, let's say that in the we'll, we'll say in the springtime, for example, and you're you're using the plywood feeder on top, then uh, uh, you don't want your jar the liquid to get down low, uh, and then the sun comes up. The night's cool, and the sun comes up in the morning and hits that jar. Then it will lose its vacuum. Uh, but uh, the only way. The only way you can feed bees in the wintertime, usually bees do not need feeding in the dead of winter. Usually it's in late spring they starve to death. But let's just say, hypothetical, that you have a hive in the dead of winter that's fixed to starve. The only feeder that will feed them is this plywood feeder. If it's cool weather, they cannot get to a inside frame feeder they cannot get to a top feeder so I stand by my uh, what I say on that and uh, okay uh, if you have any questions about it let me know uh, good Lord willing I answer all my questions uh, when you're splitting a hive I, I, I have a lot of people that say do I have to move them two miles away and in, in I understand there's a lot of people that cannot. So, uh, no, you don't have to. Uh, let's say that you move them 10 feet away. You split a hive, you move it 10 feet away. Uh, uh, you, you want at least three frames covered in bees. So maybe put more bees in there than that, and then you'll end up with... Uh, three frames covered in bees uh, and uh, what a lot of people do is they put a branch uh, out front of the hive to make it look like you know they're in a different location all right let's say that you split the hive and uh, the next day now don't don't wait a week the next day peek in there you can and see if you have enough bees in there. Enough bees to cover three frames of with bees. If there's not enough bees in there, then swap the hives. Swap the split hive with the mother hive. And now, most likely, when you peek in there the day after that, there'll be enough bees in that split hive. But here again, you don't want to wait a week. You want to do it the next day. Uh, uh, a lot of people also uh, asked about letting the, uh, the the split make their own queen, and and uh, please don't do that. Uh, it will not be a quality queen, and uh, I, I'll tell you if if uh, if money is the situation, and. Most people do work on a budget. Uh, 
the best thing to do is in the spring keep an eye on your hive and if they're if you and, and chances are they're going to try to swarm chances are and then when they get ready to they're making queen cells split them then now you don't have to worry about a queen there and be sure you got queen cells in each each split and so that'll take care of it that's the, that's the best answer right there uh uh one person wrote uh, they they had some uh, uh an old brood frame and uh there was some old cat brood on that frame if the frame is in good shape the comb is in good shape uh it will surprise you how well they will clean up uh an old brood frame it will shock you and they they, they asked me so well, should they scrape off the 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 cap brood the the cap on it and i said you can uh just just the surface uh, scrape off the old cappings and of uh, the brood and and then they'll they'll take it from there but they'll they'll clean it up if a frame uh when should you replace frames if uh i'd like for 70 percent you kind of guess at it uh I kind of like at least 70% of those cells to be usable by the queen. When this starts getting under 70%, then it's time to replace. Uh, let's say you have two hives and you've had them a number of years. Every year, uh, every year I would uh, 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 pull out... Uh, uh, 20% of the worst frames and, and put back in there uh, frames, good frames with foundation in them. So if you do that every year, you'll be in good shape. We have a, a new young preacher at church and he can't have it because he's young, but anyhow, his, his parents named him Wit and, and uh, they, the, the good Lord must have told them what to name him because he's got a lot of wit. He's witty and and he got humor too, and you know that goes that goes a long ways. But uh, anyway, the other Sunday, uh, you know he does things kind of different, and so he told the brother Whit told the congregation said uh, we're going to do something a little different this morning. He said uh, I'm going to say a word, and I want you the congregation to sing the song. That it reminds you of. And uh, so here we go, he said. All right, cross. And uh, the congregation sang the old rugged cross. What a beautiful song. And when they finished that, he said, uh, grace. And I mean, tell you, just, they started singing amazing grace. And I mean, the whole congregation. It was beautiful. And when they finished that, uh, Brother Witt said, Power. Well, I mean, tell you, somebody started it, and they all started singing, There is power in the blood. And uh, then, he, then he said, Sex. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you could... You could have heard a pin drop, man. I mean, it was just silence. The piano player, she stopped playing the piano, and uh, you could hear a pin drop. It was like a morgue at midnight. And uh, about a minute later, uh, this old woman, way back in the back, back of the pews back there, she stood up and she started singing Precious Memories. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. Uh, hey, hey, look here. I, I, <laughs> I got I to gotta give, give a shout out to Ann Hefner. She gave me that one. So, 
I hope y'all enjoyed it. All right, y'all have a good day, and and uh, let us know where you're located and uh, what country, state, you know, if you're running from the law or whatever. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.